let's focus on the notes of a C chord, C, E, and G. Starting with the top three notes, let's highlight the roots, C, and circle the other chord tones, E and G. These are the inversions of a C major triad, and they sound like this. If we move down to the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, or B, G, and D strings, and group them the same way, we get this. Let's continue for the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, or G, D, and A strings. And finally, for the 4th, 5th, and 6th, or D, A, and E strings. If we add all of these together, we see some obvious groups appear. However, they are not very practical for trying to play fuller voiced chords. If instead we connect roots that are closer together, we can box these into smaller shapes. We notice the first shape looks much like a C chord. If we take the next shape and we can move it, until it matches an open position chord, we notice that it looks much like an A chord. So let's label that one as A. If we highlight the next shape and move that one down, we can see that it looks like a G chord. We'll label that one G and move on to the next shape. And moving that down, we can see that it starts to resemble an E chord. Highlighting the last shape and moving that one down, we notice it resembles the open D chord. Since there are only five unique strings on the guitar, the E string being doubled, that means these are the only five major chord shapes on the guitar. We can move the root to any note and make any major chord. These are the C, A, G, E, and D chord shapes all played on a C root. I'm going to play a 1-5-6-4 chord progression in a couple of different keys to show how to apply these movable shapes to the neck with different roots. The first example will be in the key of E, starting with a C shape. Still in the key of E, but starting with the A shape. Yeah. 
same key, but starting with the G shape. Changing to the key of A and starting on the E shape. Finally, staying in the key of A, starting with the D shape. 